So I haven't had the same difficulty and problem. But I think you have to do what's right for your area. I respect him. He's tough. Walker, you're He's unyielding, about. yes. He's unyielding. And maybe sometimes too unyielding and maybe not too unyielding. He wants Wisconsin to come back. He wants to have a great balanced budget. So I understand what he's doing. All right. Do you support what he's doing? Are the unions in the public sector strangling the states so that they are in debt and in danger of default? Well, certainly the unions, some unions have taken advantage. If you look at what the unions did to General Motors, if you look at what the and there have also been some very bad decisions from management. But certainly some unions have done a big number on companies and on states. No question about that. All right. GE pays no taxes to the federal government. You see my report the other day, I saw General? Your report. Okay. I saw no a lot tax. Of reports. Zero. Nothing. Not so good. What do you do? Well, you change the tax code so How? that people have to pay something. They have to at least pay. Now it's interesting that some companies paid forty percent. Well, tell me, tell impressed. me what you do to make GE and other companies that don't pay anything because they park money offshore. The problem with the tax code is it's so complicated. Right. As an example, me, I have a big company. I pay lawyers millions of dollars a year, millions, over a tax code. I think that you have to simplify it, and people How? should pay a fair amount of tax. What's fair? Without a tax increase. Well, what? whatever, whatever is fair. You want flat fair. tax? What do you but want? But you have companies. Some were paying 40%. Some were paying nothing. Well, tell me what and you want. And by the way, some of the ones that were paying nothing were doing better than the ones paying 40%. Fine. But if you're president, you're not going to be able to do it on rhetoric. You're going to have to say, this is a fair tax code. How much should I pay? I make a lot of money. Not nearly what you make. But how much should I pay in tax to the federal government? What percentage of my income? I think we need a tax system. Well, tell me how much I should pay. I, it, I can't do that Why? right now, Bill. Be Bill, I'd like you to pay 100 percent because you have plenty of money. Okay. You should pay so everything. Just give everything away. You should pay everything. Right, as far so as just you, but you should be the only one in the okay. country. But don't Look. you see that people are going to want you as a candidate for president to tell them how much they should pay, how much corporations should pay? You have to look pay. at the deficits, and I will tell you, it's if, 14 if trillion. I ever decide to run, it's $14 trillion, and it's and increasing rapidly. Correct. If I ever decide to run, yeah. and I may, and I'll make that decision before June, we're not going to have the kind of problems that we have right now because... I won't be taken advantage of by the rest of the world. We are a whipping post I, I the got world. it. All right. And, and Bill. But you've got to, well, you're going to have to come it, up with some kind of tax that, code. Believe me, there won't be so much tax necessary as there is right now because we are a whipping post. We are being ripped off by the rest of the world to the tune of trillions. By the way, trillions of dollars. I'm not talking about the old word, billions. I'm talking about the new word, trillions. Okay. Illegal immigration. How are we going to stop that? Well, you either have a country or you don't. You either have a line and a boundary or you don't. Something has to be done. What? Tell me what well, you're going you to do to stop, stop people. Stop Look, millions coming over. What are you going to do? Militarize the border? It, it, it's a very easy and quick solution, and a lot of people would like to see it. It's a very, very strong solution. But you either have a country with a line or you don't have a country. And right now we don't have a country. OK, what's the easy solution? Go. Well, you you put soldiers on that line. So you militarize. You, you have. Do you have a choice? No, I don't they're think so. I've been over. calling for that for 10 years. They're coming over and they're they're climbing over a fence and there's nobody within 10 miles. And they right, walk so you in militarize they, the border. You make it very difficult. And they're selling drugs all over the place. Yeah, you stop the narcotics. And they're along killing with people all down. over the place. And we're not doing anything about okay. it. OK. Now, the 15 million illegal aliens already in the United States, what do you do with them? Well, you know, I have a real interesting situation going on. I have friends that want to get, and they think I have like this great influence, okay? They're wrong, but they think I have tremendous power and tremendous, so they call me. And they have PhDs from Europe, and they have PhDs from Asia, physicists, doctors, brilliant people, great people. They want me to help them get a green card, and you can't get it. And yet, if you come in from some place, you don't have a job, you never went to school, you come into the country and automatically you're made a citizen. And we ought to sort of have a merit system. We want to get some great people in this country. If you're great, if you've gone to school in the finest school in Europe and you have the highest marks in the finest school, you can't come into this country. And I'm All telling right. you, and, so you, excuse you me, Bill, and I'm talking about calling the biggest senator, the biggest congressman, the most powerful people, they can't do it. Okay, so you change sad. the legal immigration system, and I think everybody I would, would agree with that. certainly change it. Well, what And you do know what you I want do? in this country? I want people to come into this country that are going to be productive. I want productive okay, people in we this got country. It. Well, what do you I do? hope you get it. I get it. I'm, I'm slow, but I do pick it up. Okay. What do you do with the 15 million here? 
Do you give them a pathway to citizenship or do you put them on a bus and drive them out of here? I think right now you're going to have to do something. And, you know, it's hard to generalize, but you're going to have to look at the individual people, see how they've done, see how productive they've been, see what and their references an, a, a are decision. and then make a decision. All right. On a case by case, it's going to take a long, a long time, time and a but, lot of people. But, you know, you have some great productive people that came. No doubt. And then you have some total disasters that probably should be in prison. OK. Real quick, social issues, abortion. Right. You favor it? No, I'm, as you know, I'm pro-life. Okay, so you're pro-life on abortion. Would you outlaw abortion? Well, I'd, I'd go a step, I'd go a pretty strong step. I, something I don't like, I used to not be pro-life, I've become pro-life. I've seen friends that had children that they didn't want, and now they have children and they're the apple of the eye. So I've really changed my views over the years, but I am pro-life. I would, uh, I would really, I'm forming an opinion, I'm forming a very strong opinion, but I'll let you know in about three or four weeks if I decide All to. All right. Know. Gay marriage. Favorite? I'm against it. Why? I just don't feel good about it. I don't feel right about it. I'm against it. And I take a lot of heat because I come from New York. You know, for New York, it's like, how can you be against gay marriage? But I'm opposed to gay marriage. They say, the gays, that this violates their rights, that they are American citizens and they should have a right to live the same way heterosexuals live. And you say? Well, I think it's a tough situation. And I'll tell you what I say. I say that we have other problems. We have other problems in this country. And I don't think a president should be elected on gay marriage or not gay marriage because we have some very big problems. Based on everything I see, Obama, who said basically the same thing as I do, I think he's going to come out in favor. Yeah, he will. Okay. And but I you're, think you're, will. you remain opposed? I am opposed, yes. All right. You saw me on The View with the ladies walking out? Yes, okay. I did. But they didn't walk out on you when you no, brought up didn't. the birth certificate no, when they, they should didn't. have. Uh, that was worse than what I did. Muslim problem in the world. Is there a Muslim well, problem in the world? Well, let me explain one thing. I don't think it was worse. I'm just saying to Obama, <laughs> let me see your birth certificate. Okay, no, we'll get to that I don't in know minute. what the big deal was. Well... Whoopi. Well, Whoopi like took it a little hard. Whoopi's a friend of mine. I was in her movie and lots of I, other things. But, you know, it's one, one of those things. Go ahead. Is there a Muslim problem in the world? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I don't notice Swedish people knocking down the World Trade Center. There so certainly why, is. And why? I came out very strongly against the mosque being built virtually and across so the street. And so did I. You and I uh, were you on and the same I, page. Uh, okay. However, Muslim Americans say, hey, you're picking on us. No, nobody's picking. The fact is... It was so insensitive when they announced the mosque in that location. Don't forget, that's my territory, Manhattan real estate. When they announced the mosque in that location, I couldn't believe it. You know, you have people, 3,000 people died, and you have all those parents and sisters and brothers and wives. And I mean, just saying, I can't believe it. The World Trade Center came down. My loved one, more than anybody in the world, I love this person, dead. And now they're building a mosque across yeah, it. I thought it was the same way. I think it's very insensitive. And I but think you do believe overall there is a Muslim problem in the world. Well, there is a Muslim problem. Absolutely. You just have to turn on your television set. And do you think it encompasses all Muslims? No. And that's the sad part about life because you have fabulous Muslims. I know many Muslims and I, they're fabulous people. They're smart. They're industrious. They're great. Unfortunately, at this moment in time, there is a Muslim problem in the world. Should and by the way, and you know it, and I know it, and some people don't like saying it because well, they think it's not politically uh, correct. Whoopi and Joy will break. walk off on me. But, but when, you, when I say there's a Muslim problem in the world, I basically say, why don't the good Muslims that I believe outnumber the bad Muslims, probably eight or nine to one, or more. why don't they, the Muslim community throughout the world, speak out more forcefully against the jihadists. Why? Well, there's something out there that brings a level of hostility that I've never seen in any religion. I mean, you can say what you want about the Koran. You can say what you want. There's something there. There is tremendous hatred and tremendous hatred of us. I look at Iraq. I was watching the other day. You know, we've spent all this money and all those lives in Iraq. They hate us. They hate us. They can't get rid of us fast enough. And by the way, as soon as they leave, you know, as soon as we leave, Iran is going to take over the oil. Yeah, you know, we, we know there's a big problem. We'll get to foreign in a minute. OK. Now, when you were on The View and they didn't walk out, which they should have because they walked out on me and they should have stayed. You were way, way worse than I was on that view. You were hammering the birth certificate. Now, we very early on did an investigation about Barack Obama's birth certificate. And what the factor found out was there were two announcements the week he was 
was uh, born in both Honolulu newspapers saying that he was born. OK, that is impossible. That is impossible to make happen if he had not been born in the hospital. So therefore, I just put it to bed. I said he was born in Honolulu. All right. The two newspapers documented it. His mother was a hippie. His father was a guy from Kenya who split. There couldn't have been a sophisticated, what is he, baby Jesus? There was a sophisticated conspiracy to smuggle this baby back into the country. So I just dismissed it. But you made a big deal out of it. Bill, I grew up with Wall Street geniuses. What they do in terms of fraud and how they change documents. And I'll tell you something. If you notice, those dates were three days later. And, and here's what I ask people. Who puts announcements. Here are two poor people, a man and a woman with no money. They have a baby. There's announcements in the newspaper. The grandparents Excuse me. did it. The grandparents. Nelson Rockefeller doesn't put announcements. Sure, there are Who, birth announcements all the time. I've, I've never seen one. Really? Okay. No, no, I've they, never seen common. one. They're common. I've never seen one. But why but is this important at, to you? Because if you are going to be the president of the United States, you have to be born in this country. And there is a doubt as to whether or not he Come was on. born. Do you really feel as a doubt? You know, I started off by saying, and I always do, and I did on The View, I'm a very smart guy. I went to the best college. I had good marks. I was a very smart guy, good student, all that stuff, okay? Because what they do to the birthers, which is a term I hate, because a lot of these birthers are just really quality people that just want the truth. What they do to the birthers is unbelievable, to a point where people are afraid to talk about this subject. They're afraid to confront you or anybody about this do subject. Do you think it's I'm an not. important subject? Listen. I have a birth certificate. Right. I have my birth certificate. And in fact, they said the one I gave yesterday wasn't good enough. So I actually got the one from the health department, which is the perfect <laughs> one, OK? Because they were saying, oh, the one I gave yesterday wasn't yeah. good enough. So I got the other one. People have birth certificates. He doesn't have a birth certificate. Now, he may have one, but there's something on that birth, maybe religion. Maybe it says he's a Muslim. I don't know. Maybe he doesn't want that. Or he may not have one. But I will tell you this, if he wasn't born in this country, it's one of the great scams of uh, all Absolutely. Time. Uh, but I don't well, think that's Well, I mean, you don't, but I'm starting to think. I don't think way. you two believe weeks that ago, either. I, I think it's two provocative. Weeks ago, you get a lot of attention raising the question, but I don't think you believe Two weeks was, ago, yeah. I felt like probably he was born in the country. Today, it's possibly. I'm telling you, it's changed. <laughs> I've seen too many things. Why did Whoopi Goldberg get so angry about you? I don't know. And then she, Didn't said, you ask her? Then she said to me, and she likes me. She said, Donald, I love you. But she actually said if it were a white man. Now, I know they asked for Bush's birth certificate. I know for a fact they asked for John McCain's birth certificate. So why did she make I it racial? They, why I don't know. She? she brought race into right. it. She brings race into it. What can I tell you? You don't know why? She started up by saying I love you, and then she brought race into it. You tell me what that I means. don't know. Okay. All right, let's go to Libya. Um, the Libyan action is being explained by President Obama, as you know, as a humanitarian act to stop a slaughter, which we all believe would have happened. Which, which is fine. Okay. Do you support it? I, I support stopping that kind of a slaughter. The problem is, where do you stop? You've got other countries Absolutely. that are doing worse than this guy ever dreamed of. And well, we're not doing anything. We have other countries like Darfur. Well, we're not doing anything, though. You know, the a one lot thing of I would say, Bill, Go ahead. And I've never said this before. This is a first on your show. Good luck with it. Run with it. In the old days, when you had wars, you win, right? You mm -hmm. win. To the victor belong the spoils. So when we go to Iraq, we spend a trillion four so far, and thousands of lives are lost, right? And not to mention all the poor guys and gals with one arm and no arm and all the problems, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, right. And we're going to leave. And as sure as you're sitting there, Iran is going to come over, take over not only Iraq, but perhaps more importantly to them, take over the second biggest oil fields in the world. Right. And I like the old system better. You win a war, you stay there and you keep the oil. And, you know, then those people will not have died in vain. Forget the money we spend. They will not have died in vain. You have the second largest oil fields in the world. Now, they're not going to come as long as we're there. But 15 minutes after we leave, Iran is going to go into And Iraq. what do you do to Iran if that happens, if you're president? Nobody's going to have enough heart to want to go no, back. No, but you are going to be gotta president. Stay. Keep you are going to be. You're going to be in the office. Iran Bill. comes in, Bill. tries to take the oil. What do you do? You stay and you.